welcome to the start of another week in my classroom. Hello everyone and welcome to the start of another week in my classroom. So today is Tuesday and it feels a lot like Monday because yesterday was Martin Luther King Day. So school was closed, of course. And today, being the first day of the school week, felt a lot like Monday. Some of the kids were like, I was so confused that we were going to music today instead of PE. I go, I know, because today's Tuesday. But we were able to get through the day, and I was able to get through the day, because I don't know if you can tell, but I'm getting sick again. And I'm actually feeling a lot better right now than I did this morning. I'm coming to you at the end of the day. The whole day, I was so sniffly and weak and tired, and I'm like, oh no. How am I going to make it through today? But we made it, everyone. We made it. So let me show you our agenda for today. And I haven't checked it off yet. So as I show you, we're going to check off all the things that we got through today. All right. Our day started with math. The kids finished their practice book pages. And I was able to address their questions that they had any before they took their topic seven test. Check. Tomorrow we'll start on chapter eight, which is multiplying whole numbers into fractions. Then we had a big break. So they went to music, lunch, and then we had recess in the classroom. And then they continued to work under chapter four project, which is the one that I talked about last week, the PowerPoint that they're creating on a little section that they were assigned from chapter four. We're doing a little jigsaw with that. So once everyone is done with their PowerPoints, they're gonna teach the whole class about their section. In reading, just before we did our wonders assessment, we went over the paired selection, we compared it to the main selection. The paired selection was a first hand account and the main selection was a second hand account, so we were able to compare that. And then the kids took their wonders unit three, week three assessment. We didn't get through the introduction for the vocabulary words. They got it for homework, but tomorrow I have to make sure I dedicate some time in the morning to introduce the words, talk about them, etc. So this has to be moved for tomorrow. All right, then we didn't get to writing because the students needed extra time to do their test. And then we started the introduction to matter by watching a Bill Nye the Science video. And here's a little clip about that. Bill Nye the Science Guy is brought to you by Matter. Matter is everything and all stuff. So that's pretty much the rundown of our day. And then it was time to go home. The kids got their homework and off they went. Tomorrow is another day. I will not be here on Thursday because I am going to some doctor's appointments. So the students are going to have some sub work that I'm gonna leave for them. So I'm gonna work on that tomorrow since I'm not feeling 100% and I stayed a little bit later than usual because I was filming a video for a collab that I'm doing with some other teacher YouTubers. By the time this video has gone out, that collab is already up. So I'll be sure to leave a link down below to the playlist so you can check it out. That collab is all about how we were that kid. So a group of teacher YouTubers sit down and talk about the type of kid that they were in the classroom, sharing their experiences and also some tips in case you have one of those students in your classroom. All right, so I'm actually getting ready to go. I do have to say, as far as my wellness journey goes, so here we go, spotlight on wellness. I decided to do a detox on Friday after I told you about me needing to restart my health and fitness journey. I'm gonna call it a wellness journey right now, not so much a weight loss journey, even though we are gonna weigh ourselves from time to time just to make sure we have some kind of data point to compare our progress to, but that is not going to define me, no. But on Friday, I decided to do a detox, a sugar detox and a carb detox. So I'm purposely not eating sugar, so no sugary drinks. If I am craving something sweet, it's gonna come from natural sweets like fruit because they're packed with fiber and that offsets a little bit of the carbs that are in the fruit but mostly berries like strawberries and blueberries. That's what I'm eating. I also started moving a little bit more. So I did go to TY Park over the weekend and I completed about four miles or so, but I met my step goal for my step bet. 
And yesterday I did my first strength training workout. Now I wanted to do something easy thinking that six repetitions of each exercise except the ab core exercises would be enough, but I ended up giving myself six exercises. In retrospect, I should have stuck with three done those and then went ahead and did my walk run kind of thing to meet my step goal yesterday i overdid it and then my body started having a lot of muscle spasms all around my torso and my neck it was no good those exercises though were effective because today i am sore all over and i know i was successful with that but when i do strength training tomorrow because i'm doing it three times a week when i do it tomorrow i'm not going to do all those exercises i'm just going to stick to three exercises six repetitions of each and three sets of all that so we'll see how it goes i'm supposed to meet my running club this afternoon this evening so we'll see how it goes i don't plan on running because i need to be kind to myself and just take it easy and slowly so i'm just gonna walk the entire time and get my steps in all right so that is a little bit on my spotlight for wellness i'll keep you updated on how i continue to go on with that but with that, I will leave you for today, Tuesday, and we're going to move on to Wednesday. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday. So I am coming to you at the end of the day, way past the end of the day, because I had to leave sub plans and everything ready for tomorrow since I am taking that day off. I just wanted to let you know what we ended up doing today, and the best way I can do that is to show you the agenda on the board. We started the day with reading and we introduced a new unit. We did the opener video, the read aloud, we went over the vocabulary, and we read the shared read, which was Remembering Hurricane Katrina. We didn't get to the vocabulary words again, but the students already know them, so it's not a big deal. We worked on our wintergram, so I'll show you a preview of some of the ones that were finished. We ended up not having Spanish, so we were able to continue our wintergrams during Spanish. In math, we went ahead and introduced chapter eight and did lessons 8.1 and 8.2. The students practiced that. And in science, we finished watching the Bill Nye the Science Guy video on matter, as well as going over topic three, and we did some doodle notes from science and math doodles on TPT. I'll show you that in a moment. During reading, I introduced the students to allusions because the illusion of Herculean effort was in the passage. So I went ahead and talked about it and how we need to understand allusions that refer to mythology. So we'll be doing a little activity later on this week, probably Friday, if not next week, to continue to practice this craft and structure skill that the students need to understand. All right, I wanna quickly show you the science and math doodle that I was talking about that we worked on today. And also I'll be sure to link that resource in the description box below. I did get it from TPT. This is the sheet right here that we were working on because we started going over the properties of matter in our textbook. And these again come from Melanie Ellsworth, science and math doodles on TPT. And I love it because her resources not only include the simple fill in the blank doodle, but she also includes a PowerPoint that you can use as you go over these skills with the students. On the back is the next lesson that we're going to be doing, which they've already reviewed, which is the states of matter, and it goes over the same process. So let me show you how the PowerPoint looks when it comes to this. So as you can see, her PowerPoint starts out just like the plain paper, but as you keep hitting next, it starts filling in the information that the students need to complete the science doodles or the notes. So it's a really great way, simple way. I love the colors that the students can just summarize the gist of the lesson that we were going over. Also, I want to briefly mention that this morning it was super cold here in South Florida. By super cold, I'm wearing three layers, well, two layers right now because I took off my jacket, but this morning, the temperature in my car when I got in registered at 38 degrees. Now, I know for some of you that may not be cold, but that's very cold for us in South Florida. By the time I got to school, I noticed the weather looked super beautiful, the skies are super clear, and then the weather was 39 degrees when I got to school. Now, it did go up to like in the 50s, and I think the high today was 66. Not sure if it got to that, but it felt colder also because there was a lot of wind blowing, so the wind chill factor kicked in. All right, so that was my morning, that was my day, and right now I've been working on 
First, rearranging the classroom. So I have a new seating arrangement. So when the students come in tomorrow, they're going to see the new seating arrangement. I won't be here, but I want to see how this one turns out. So let me give you a view of how it is. So over here, we have a group of six. And initially, it was five here, five here, five on that side and five on the other. But I really didn't have space for the green team to be like in the middle. So they have enough room for their chairs to be pushed back, etc. So I ended up spreading green team in the center here. I did leave the chair pockets on right now before I leave. Usually the students stack up their chairs, put their chair pockets away in these carts that are right by their desks or their teams. And yeah, but we haven't used the chair pockets in a while because when our classroom flooded last week, I just rearranged everything and I just put them to the side. But at least when they come in tomorrow morning, their chair pockets are already there. They know which team they belong to and they're ready to go with the do now assignment that I'm leaving with the sub. And talking about sub plans, let me show you what I planned for the students to complete tomorrow. So I already left the sub plans on this folder right here and inside the folder is all the papers that they need for tomorrow. And my desk is pretty much ready to go. Let me just show you what those activities are. This is my sub plan template that I use and I leave for the subs. There's also a page. I can't show it to you right now because of the little rubber band and I don't really want to take it apart right now. But there's a page where the sub can use for monitoring behavior and letting me know if the class did well and also a comment form. And these are the assignments that I left for the students. This sheet along with this sheet is one sheet double-sided. There's basically some brain teasers to just get their day started. Following that, they're going to have a math packet that has the math that we're going over. We're multiplying whole numbers into fractions. So we were going over whole numbers multiplied by unit fractions and whole numbers multiplied by regular fractions and unit fractions. And I also included some problem solving with that skill for them to complete along with this math review from One Step Teacher Shop that goes over chapters one through seven so they can practice with that. And on the back, they have space to do their work if they need to. Then for science, they have this passage from Super Teacher Worksheets. This is basically on why does matter matter, and it's on matter, along with some questions that they need to fill in. And then I also have this other passage from K-12 Reader, this is free as well. I'll try to remember to link it down below, but again, it's on matter and it has some questions for them to complete. For ELA, they're gonna start with vocabulary. So they have this closed passage along with this one that I thought would be fun. They already have the crossword puzzle filled out with the word and they have to come up with clues to go along with the words that are filled out across and down. So that is the first assignment for ELA. The second assignment for ELA is this passage that comes from our Wonders practice book. And this is the Beyond Reproducibles, which is higher order for gifted students. And once they read that, which goes over our comprehension skill, it goes over the essential question. The students then answer these questions on the back on point of view. We're currently going over point of view of literary text which is first person and third person and what we can learn when they're told from those perspectives. After they complete that, I gave them this comprehension frame that I created myself. So they will put their name and date here. They'll rate the passage. They'll write about the point of view. They'll visualize because that's our comprehension strategy is to visualize as we read. They'll write about the conflict, the theme, and a summary of the passage. For writing, I gave them this picture prompt they have a little comic here and some questions and prompts so that they can answer here. And I did give them extra line paper on the back of this sheet. So think of this sheet as a double-sided sheet. And then for social studies to end the day, I have them do these state dailies by GeoPaid. I'll try to remember to link them down below, but they have them for every state. So they'll be working on these front and back and this one as well because they're done pretty quickly. So they have assignments to do for the whole entire day. So those are my sub plans for tomorrow. I am ready to go home because I've been working really, really hard and I'm still sick and I need to get my workout in. I'll probably end up going to the gym since it's already starting to get dark and I need to get my steps in. All right, so if I don't see you tomorrow, I don't know if I'll vlog my day tomorrow or not, but if I don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you Friday.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday. I did not vlog yesterday because it turned out that in the morning when I woke up to get ready for my appointment, my son was not feeling well, so after I went to my appointment, I took him to urgent care, and he ended up getting diagnosed with strep throat. So poor thing, had been recovering from the flu that he was diagnosed with last week, and now he has strep throat, so he had to miss school yesterday and today. So... Had to step in as a mom and take care of all those things. And I did get a workout in yesterday afternoon, which I'll talk to you a little bit more about later on because I'm getting ready to pick up the students from PE because it's almost our lunchtime, which brings me to my lunchbox. I just want to say I was packing my lunchbox this morning and it's a new lunch bag. I say box, but it's a bag. It's a new lunch bag that I got from Amazon during winter break and I underestimated how much it could fit because it looks little, but it is jam-packed full of stuff. Let me show you because I was about to pull out my food to start warming it up while I picked up the kids. So check out what's inside my lunchbox. So this is my lunch bag right here. I got it from Amazon. I'll remember to link it down below. This is just the LED light that I got from their running club which I just keep here so I know where to find it. So if I'm running at night or when it's dark, I can just have easy access to it. But check this out. So I have an avocado that I'm gonna eat with my lunch. And then I have a whole bunch of snacks. I have pistachios. I may not eat them. I have mandarin orange. I had part of my breakfast that I was supposed to eat, but I guess I'll eat it for a snack later. This is mush which is overnight oats. It is expensive. So I'm going to start making my own because it only has these ingredients and that's pretty easy to make because I've made overnight oats before. So in here, I also have some hummus. I have some seaweed snacks. I have a little thing of balsamic vinegar to eat with my avocado. I have these turkey pepperonis, which are so yummy. And I just snack on these. There's only 70 calories for 16 slices. And I'll eat these with veggies. Like I'll pair these with some sweet peppers that I dip inside the hummus. And that is a really good snack. I also have some blueberries. Look at all this stuff. I still have more stuff in here. I have an apple. I may or may not eat it. And finally, oops. Oh, I have my lunch. So all of these things in this bag and in the front i have some cough drops and my fork so yep that is my lunch ladies and gentlemen along with all these other snacks that i have to eat throughout the day i jam-packed it full of snacks because if i feel hungry at any time during the day i can just munch on something that is healthy and good for me and i'll give you an update on my spotlight on wellness and my wellness journey a little later on in today as well because i do have a week to reflect on because today marks a week since I restarted my wellness journey. All right, let me pick up the students, take them to lunch, and I'll check in back with you later. And my lunch for today is just cauliflower fried rice, which was a frozen bag that I bought from Whole Foods. And it just has these veggies with some spices, nothing else really. And that's my phone. And these are just some Cajun chicken meatballs. So let me grab that. Oh yeah, I'm also eating that with some the avocado. The day has finally come to an end and we ended the day with our social studies project for chapter four, which I told the kids that we're taking way too long with. So I need to structure that group time a little bit more specific to what I need them to complete. I told them already on Monday is the last day that they need to get this presentation all done because they've taken way longer than I had anticipated. Mostly because sometimes they just chat and get distracted. So, all right, so that's basically what we ended up doing at the very end of the day. They love that project. They love working with groups. They love working with technology because they are creating a PowerPoint. Before that, we read a story in our Wonder series, the main selection, and they took their vocabulary test. Before that this morning, I don't know if I mentioned, I don't think I did, they took their mid-chapter checkpoint for chapter eight. We're behind, we're supposed to be already either ending chapter nine or starting chapter 10. So I'm trying to slowly get back up to where we're supposed to be. But all in all, it was a pretty good day. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about what I have been eating as far as my spotlight on wellness and also kind of give you an almost like before view. Someone's at my door, so hold on. 
Sorry, it was a student trying to access the classroom next door. But anyway, I wanted to kind of show you like a before of how I kind of look now so that I have a way to compare myself as the weeks go by. And one thing that I remind myself is whenever you embark on a wellness journey or fitness journey, it takes four weeks for you to see the difference, eight weeks for your friends and family, and 12 weeks for everyone else. So I am not looking at hey, I'm going to lose all this weight in one week. No. And talking about that, I did get on the scale, even though we don't have a really good relationship. It was kind of kind to me this morning. I lost two and a half pounds from everything that I've been doing, from my moving, from eating better, cutting out the sugar, cutting out the carbs. And yeah, I am basically trying to cut out the sugar and the carbs for these two weeks. I've already made it for one week. And it's basically to kind of do a detox. Now, at the end of the two weeks, I'm going to make a decision for myself whether I want to continue cutting out the sugar and the carbs. I have cut out sugar from my life for a year before. It's actually pretty good for you when you cut out all the added sugars. Now, what I mean by that is I'm not going for the sugary stuff and the sugary treats and all that stuff. I'm not choosing that. What I'm doing is if I have sweet cravings, I just eat natural fruit and I don't add sugar in my tea or anything like that. So that's what I mean. And I needed to do it because I need to detox my system from all those toxins. And I'm sorry, I'm blabbing about all this wellness things. But let me show you how I look right now. So here I am, and this is kind of like my before kind of view of how I'm looking. I'm just fixing my sleeves because I just literally took off my sweater. And this is how I look. Yeah, I don't look bad. I love my body. That's not why I'm embarking on this wellness journey. I'm embarking on it because I am not healthy. I'm having some health issues that I need to address. And I know that by losing the weight, I'm going to reduce my risk for high blood pressure, which is already starting to be a factor. My risk for diabetes, which is in the family. Both my mom and dad have diabetes. And of course, heart attacks, because that's also in my family as well. My dad just had open heart surgery last summer and I do have the gene for chronic heart disease. So anyway, and I know that because my doctor did some gene like test, genetic tests a couple years ago. But it, so this is how I look. My arms, my grandmother blessed me with these arms. My grandmother used to have arms like this, my paternal grandmother. And by the way, a lot of my health issues come from my dad's side of the family. So I do have a lot of his genes. I do have his blood type as well. So these are size 18. And this shirt that I'm wearing, this is a Lula Row shirt. This is an extra large. And yeah, I'm just wearing my little cute little shoes there. But this is how I look right now. I mean, like I said, I don't look bad. And before you say anything, I am going to let you know how much I weigh. One, because I'm not ashamed of this number. It's, it is what it is. It's just my relationship with Earth's gravity, but also so that I can keep tabs on my journey and where I was. So last week when I weighed myself, so a week from today, last week, I weighed 248.4 pounds. I know that was a number that got me into a jolt into like reality. And I'm like, bro, that's too, pretty much 250 pounds. I know I don't look it because my body just carries it very well, I guess. I mean, everyone has their own opinion, but I really don't feel like I look like I'm almost 250 pounds. I'm a size 18 and put it this way. When I was 175 pounds, I was a size eight. So everybody carries their weight differently. My weight just happens to be a lot of muscle and a lot of bones, I guess you can say. Um, so that's me. And today I weighed myself and I'm 245.6, I think it was. So yeah, that's me right now. I am just sharing what I'm doing. And I'm just taking it little by little, one step at a time. I'm just being real. And if this is something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below and I'll continue to share more about my wellness journey and what I'm doing. So talking about exercise yesterday. So I wanted to exercise yesterday and I was not feeling it. I was like, I am not exercising. I am way too comfortable on this bed. I've been through too much today. I went to the doctor. Then I took my son to the doctor and all that. I got up, I got dressed, I walked out the door and I did some strength training exercises right in my carport. I didn't go to the gym. I have some hand weights. I didn't even use weights yesterday. I was all doing body weights. So I did a little warm up before I got started and then I did six body squats, six push-ups, 
and 15 stomach crunches. And I repeated that three times. I took a minute, about a minute rest in between those reps or those sets. And then I wanted to go for a run, but it started to rain. Do you think I let that deter me? No. I turned on my seconds pro timer where I had set intervals for running. And the way that I said it was I gave myself a five minute warm up. And then I gave myself 30 second run, 45 minute walk. And it kept going all the way till it reached like 40 something minutes. And then it ended with a five minute cool down. In total it was 55 minutes. Yes, my friends, I did that running in place, walking in place, and I completed the whole thing. At first I was like, just complete half of it. But when I was going through half of it, I'm like, dude, I feel really good. Let me keep going. And I did, and I finished the whole thing. The other way that I did it is I actually named some of my runs. So if the timer, because I have it for voice alerts, when the timer said, run, you've got this. And I typed that so that the voice would say it. Or run, look at you go. And it was motivating and it was nice. And also I put, you're halfway done, four more runs, this is the last run. That's how I kept doing it. And that's the same timer I'm going to use for tomorrow's 5K race. So I'm very excited. So that, my friends, is how I was able to get my workout done, even though the weather wasn't cooperating and I wasn't in the mood. And then I felt really proud of myself. So it can be done anywhere. You don't need equipment, really. You don't need to go to a gym. You could do it right from your living room if you want to, really. I just did it in my carport because I had more space. So yeah, that was my Thursday, and that's my little update on my wellness journey. Now, when I came into the classroom this morning, it was in a complete disarray. The desks were all messed up pretty much like they are right now. And there were chair pockets on top of a basket. And that's not where they're supposed to go. They're supposed to go in the drawers. So I had to talk to my students about where they needed to put their things, etc. because we got to take care of our classroom environment. I also got some boxes from the classroom funds that we get from our state. I had some money to spend. I think it was like 330 something dollars or 28. And I bought a lot of supplies for the classroom. So I got boxes from Staples and from another school specialty supply like vendor that they had. We use Class Wallet, which is a website, and that's where our money gets deposited. And then we use the vendors that they have on there to make purchases. Or we can upload receipts of things that we have bought. So let me show you these boxes. Starting with the first box, it's a little box here. This was actually the last thing I ordered, and I actually placed this order maybe two days ago, so they got here pretty quickly. So I got myself a new set of flare pans because the ones I have are already running dry, so it's important because I love to grade with these. And here are the other two boxes. So this one has some index cards in here. So we have index cards, we have ruled and unruled, so with no lines. I have crayons because I'm going to be replenishing their art caddies. So I've got 12 packs of crayons because there's two in each art caddy and I have six of them. I got some colorful post-its. Look how pretty those colors. Got some tape dispensers because we use those when we are doing our interactive notebooks, which we haven't done too much of that in a long time. And I'm planning on having some time where we can catch up on that. And I also bought some binder clips because they were a dollar. They had some dollar sales. Oh, and the biggie here is a whole class pack of Crayola markers. There are 16 different colors. Over here we have another box with the black flare pens that the students use. So I did buy three, so we have some to replenish. I also bought some Expo markers in different colors to find tips, especially for my calendar. I got some cardstock, I got some glue sticks, I got tape. I got a pack of scissors to replenish the ones I have been going missing. And I also got some tape dispensers from here too. So I'm gonna compare the quality of both. So that's pretty much what we got from this order. I have to say that I'm very thankful that our state does provide us with class funds and money so we can buy things. Basically, we are allowed to buy consumables, things that we use throughout the year. So we can't buy like equipment or computers or technology with that money. But these are things that we use from time to time in the classroom, and it's important to replenish those every year. Okay, so trying to think what else I wanted to share with you before I get to go. But yeah, I'm getting ready to leave because I'm going to the Broward Convention Center to pick up my race packet. They're having a fitness expo right now today, and I get to pick up my race packet tomorrow. I'm running a 5K. And this race series is also part of a marathon and a half marathon that's also happening on Sunday. So there's going to be a lot of people there at the expo, probably today, 
mostly tomorrow, but a lot of people that are gonna be there today are because they need to pick up their race packets for tomorrow's race. So I'm just gonna take it easy on this race. I just wanna be able to complete it. I may or may not vlog it. If I do vlog it, it'll be on a separate vlog that'll probably go up on Sunday or Monday. We'll see how my schedule and my time works with that. But yeah, that's pretty much where my fitness and my wellness journey is and how our week has gone. It was actually a pretty good week. I was only with the students three days, but that's how it was. That's how it turned out. Monday was a holiday and then I had to take a day off yesterday and it was good. I did. So next week is a full five day school week and we have tons to do. So I'll be sure to bring you along with us as well next week. All right. So I think I'm going to leave you for now. And I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to share for this vlog, but if I do remember next week, I'll let you know. All right, so I hope you enjoyed coming along with us on this week in our classroom. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.